Um, is there a disconnect between the the sales, the outlook, and you know the performance of the stocks? Certainly, uh, I think it's one of the biggest asymmetric opportunities right now, right here that I've seen in my 34 years on Wall Street. And because and why now uh, is very much um, because of how we got here, right? So because cannabis uh, has been a Schedule One narcotic. Uh, for so long and we won't go into that rabbit hole uh, of why uh, but because of that uh, the big takeaway is that u.s cannabis companies can't deduct normal operating expenses it's called section 280e of the tax code so they're being taxed at an effective rate right now of 75 to 80 percent and they have been for years which is why only the best uh, have been able to survive and, and the industry was uh, up until two weeks ago, really, um, at, you know, looking at an extinction event because of the uh, regulatory construct. But uh, as you probably know, the HHS came out uh, two weeks ago on Wednesday. It was the last couple of days of summer. I was here, but not many people were. Uh, they recommended cannabis go to a Schedule Three, which would importantly remove that 280E tax code. Uh, and and now we're just waiting on the DEA to codify that opinion. We think that could happen by year end, uh, and then Biden can sign it into law before next year's election. Uh, that's just one thing that's happening. Safe banking, we heard last night. It was broke. Uh, news broke last night, and it's, it's moving around today or getting out today. Uh, that safe banking is going to go through a Senate committee markup. This is the, the sign or the tell uh, that the Senate's going to pass safe banking for the first time, uh, the upper chamber, uh, and then conceivably be uh, tacked on to a must-pass bill by year end. So there's a few things, right? There, uh, there, and if they all happen, this could get really spicy. But you know, just on the math alone, without anything else, if we move to a Schedule Three, if that gets codified, you're talking about a two to three x turn uh, on some of these names just on math. So. I guess, explain to us why it's developed this way. Ten years ago, you thought it would be a much better proposition uh, than it has been. What have been the big missteps? What have maybe what has the industry missed? What has Washington missed uh, over the last decade? You know, it's interesting. When I, we spent a lot of time in Washington, and, and they had explained to us that the states are designed to be nimble, and the federal government's designed to move slow. Uh, and then added. Uh, but the thing about the federal government is that when change happens, it tends to happen all at once. Uh, but because of the disconnect between state and federal laws, uh, because the politicians have been very slow on the uptake, uh, because cannabis is a complex issue with a lot of stakeholders that, stakeholders that have a legitimate claim uh, to, to participate in the industry, uh, it's really become muddled down in a lot of different cross currents as uh, the illicit markets really proliferated. So, you know, as this comes online and becomes a legal uh, framework, which we just took, again, a seismic shift two weeks ago for the first time after a two and a half year bear market, this is the first domino and it's a big one. Uh, and if the others fall, it can get spicy, but we need this uh, to sort of uh, relax the arbitrage between federal and state law, allow these companies to operate on an even playing field. And after what they've just been through, I would argue that they're they're pretty lean and mean and ready to ready to go to work. Todd, if I look across the, uh, uh, the market, there are a lot of different participants, right? Not just in North America, um, but mainly, right, in the U.S. and Canada. Are there companies you think that really have got it right? Are there companies you think that are solid, um, you know, investable, uh, that we should be looking at more closely? And can sure. you tell me some and, names? And so yeah, of course. And, and, I'll, and I say this, you know, we have positions, we advise some of these companies, but we got to know a lot of companies very well. You know, iron sharpens iron during a two and a half year bear market. This was a 91 percent drawdown for MSOS, which is the ETF that we advise. Um, but, you know, certainly you can learn a lot just by watching how some of these companies did during that trough, as we think it is, as in front of all these states onboarding on the East Coast. Um, and, you know, you look at the, the Veranos, the Terrasens, the Green Thumbs. Uh, and there's others, right? Glasshouse in California. Uh, you, you know, as 280E goes away, as the federal government starts to move out of the way, uh, it has to be incremental, uh, the change. And, and that change, uh, because it's incremental, like we don't have the political wherewithal capacity to move this to a, to, to a deschedule where it should be, but Schedule 3 is a stepping stone to descheduling, happens to play right into the MSOs and the publicly traded companies' hands because they still have some of the protections and the barriers to entry uh, and a very regulated market at the state level, but the federal government's moving to uh, really support the Tenth Amendment and, and let the states become the laboratories of democracy and those industries 
uh, evolve at the state level uh, as the federal framework takes shape. So this is a big, you know, this is a big, big catalyst. I don't think people really understand it. What's interesting, uh, A, uh, is that there is a, a pretty significant structural short in these names, we feel, uh, because of, uh, without getting too far into the weeds, because uh, the U.S., Cannabis companies have to list on the Canadian Stock Exchange. Uh, they can't list on U.S. stock exchanges, but the MSOS ETF is on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, there's been a pretty pernicious uh, algorithm that's been uh, hitting these uh, stocks down, naked short, we believe, naked shorting these stocks, uh, routing them through Europe, however it may be. But we think they're still there. We think they're still trapped. And we'll see you know, how that plays out uh, over the time to come. But the other interesting part is all the institutions, and you know, you know, we talked to a lot of these guys. Uh, we made a lot of calls after this news, and even the, the institutions or the funds or the family offices that can buy U.S. cannabis are telling us, a lot of them are telling us, after so many disappointments, we want to actually see it happen. We want to see this play through. We want to see it get done before we're going to believe it. Uh, and I think that's incredibly bullish also.